Now let's go ahead and quickly talk about the dynamic path. So again, there is an optimization objective and there are some constraints. Okay. We just saw an example where we said, okay, the optimization objective is really to use the lowest T metric and some of the other things. Yeah, so let's talk about the optimization objective. So in the case of optimization objective, we are saying, okay, minimum metric optimization. So here we know the default IGP metric and T metric is 10. So in this example, we are configuring a policy. In the policy, we are configuring candidate path. We are assigning a preference and we are saying dynamic in the metric. We can have a different type of metric. Based on that, we can optimize our path. We can pick an IGP path. We can pick a T path or we can pick the link with the lowest delay actually in this case. So if you take an example here, in this case, the T metric for the link between 1 and 2 is 15 and IGP is 10. Same thing between 2 and 3, the IGP metric is 10 and the T metric is 15. The link between 1 and 5 has a T metric of 5 and IGP metric is 30. And if the example kind of continues here, uh, it talks about, okay, between 4 and 3, the IGP metric is 10 and T metric is 8. So that means if we go to minimum metric, 1 to 3, if we use IGP is equals to SID list uh, 16,003, that word it says okay in that case we'll go ahead and uh, probably pick the path the top path because we have the less number of igp nodes set to travel but on the other hand if we pick an optimization objective of t if you take a look at here the t value of 15 plus 15 is 30 while for this one is like 5 and 8 13 only so we have this as the better path so that means if we go ahead and say hey, the optimization objective is t it will go ahead and pick the green path so in this case, if it says a head end computes a SID list that expresses the shortest path according to the selected metric. If it was IGP, it will go ahead and pick the blue path. If it's a T metric, it will go ahead and pick the green path. And again, during the hands-on, we'll say how we can go ahead and change this uh, IGP metric or T metric. But again, under a dynamic, we can have a different type of uh, optimization either based on IGP, T or delay. Again, uh, we can go ahead and say, hey, you know, when you are traversing, make sure... Uh, the type here is really talks about delay. That means pick the path where we have the lowest kind of a delay and all on those links. An example kind of continues here. Uh, you can go ahead and read about. Now in this case, this is an example of low delay. That means if you took at the top path between 1, 2, 2 and 3, the delay here for the first link is 15, for the second is also 15. But the link between 1 and 5 has a delay of 10, between 4 and uh, 3 is 8. So that means from delay metric perspective, this the green path is the valid path. So if we go ahead and pick the metric type as delay for our policy, it was going to go ahead and pick this green path. So again, these are all different type of objectives, optimization objective for a policy. Okay, now let's take an example about this uh, where it says affinity. So if you take a look at this particular example, in this we have couple nodes. And these node, these paths are kind of, you know, shown with the kind of this uh, purple color and red, uh, red color. So where it says the plain one are the node which are used on this particular and the plain two is a different one. So here we are saying, okay, hey, under segment routing, traffic engineering, we are configuring an affinity map. We are giving a color, let's say call it plain one, where we are configuring a bit position of a zero. And for the second one, we are configuring a bit position one. Now, in this policy, when we are configuring, we can go ahead and pick a metric type in IGP, but at the same time, I can go ahead and say I'm putting a condition. So, this was the optimization objective, and this is the condition that we are associating with that. So, we are saying, okay, hey, I'm doing a condition based on affinity, and I'm saying, hey, exclude any which is a plane two. That means you need to find a good path based on IGP. But when you are doing that, you need to make sure that you are not picking any link which belongs to plane 2. That means don't go ahead and pick up the purple path, any node which is any node where we see the purple line. So that's how we can also go ahead and associate these constraints when uh, we are bringing up our policy with the optimization objectives. And that's what it talks about the affinity. So we are configuring a link affinity in this case. In this case, the link between 2 and 21 is colored 
with this purple which is just simply called as plane 2 and we'll learn how we can go ahead and do that and we do that with the help of affinity map first we go ahead and configure an affinity map and then we go ahead and pick this color and we'll start coloring or start assigning that color value to the links basically the another example is called service disjointness or simply the link disjointness. So in this example, if you see that there is a there we have two policy, by name policy one and policy two. Both of these policies are originating or instantiated on node one. So node one is your head end. And for both of the policy, the endpoint or the destination is node seven. So in that case, we want to make sure that both of the policies are not trying to take one same path. Because what happens if anything happens? any failure happens in that path both our policies will become invalid if they happens to have only let's say one path so in that case when we are configuring our policy we can use this different disjointness as one of the constraints so how do we go ahead and do that so in this example we are configuring a policy one and a policy two where the for the first policy the color is 20 for the second policy is color 30 and if you recall the color needs to be unique between a pair of nodes and that's why we have for one policy color 20 for other 30. Endpoint is same. Candidate path, both of the policy has one candidate path, both of has a preference of 100. Now, if this is dynamic, the second policy is dynamic. The metric type is IGP, the metric type is also IGP. That means if we leave the policy at this stage, there is a good possibility that both of these policy will end up taking one path. And that is not good because as we said if any failure happens in that path the both of these policy will become invalid so in that case what are we saying okay here we are adding another condition here with our optimization objective in the constraint we are saying disjoint path disjoint path group id group id one one type and node so we are saying hey both of these policy belongs to a disjoint group and the group id for that group is one where we are saying the type is node that means you need to make sure that the policy which belongs to group one they are not using the same set of a node so the constraint is based on the node that means they need to go ahead and pick a different node for both of the policies so in this case the head end computes two disjoint paths so the head end the node one will go ahead and find two different paths where the same node is being utilized for both the policies and that is the condition or the constraint we are giving and this constraint is simply called as your disjoint path now with that let's go ahead and take a look at some of the constraints again uh, we quickly touched about so we can go ahead and configure te affinity we can go ahead and configure ip address we can go ahead and configure srlgs we can also say maximum accumulated metric for igp te and a delay maximum number of sets in a solution as well as the disjoint that we kind of uh, briefly saw here we had seen an example of that purple and the red plane so where we went ahead and configured an affinity so link the network can be colored that's what it says okay the links we can go ahead and assign a color value to our link and then srt can compute a path that include or exclude those links means those colors basically that means when you are configuring a policy you can say hey pick certain links where we have that color or don't pick certain links where we have a certain color basically so now if you take an example here in this topology under segment routing traffic engineering we are configuring an affinity map it's a define a user friendly name for an affinity bit map so we are saying okay color blue has a bit position of a zero and these bit positions are being consumed by your I, igp routing protocol either isis or ospf so we are giving a user friendly name blue and the bit position is zero Similarly, red has a bit position of 1 and green has a bit position of 2 and this is happening only on the node 1. Now, once we have defined these bit position or the affinity map, now we can go ahead and start coloring the links with these affinity maps. So, for the link, now we go under interface gig 000 and this all needs to be done under segment routing traffic engineering context. Now, we are saying, okay, okay the affinity for this link, the color we are assigning is blue. That means this link has a color of blue while the link between the one and six we are saying we are giving an affinity of both color blue and green that means assign affinity map to an interface similarly now this is only on this particular router if we need to do the same thing for two three uh, four five and six we need to go ahead and similar define the affinity map on all the routers 
as well as we, depending on the color that we want, we need to go ahead and start coloring those interfaces on those different nodes also. So now when you're configuring an SR policy, now we can use the keyword that says include any, where we can go ahead and pick uh, the color. We can say include all, or we can say exclude any. Again, we'll go ahead and take a look in the example by the hands on. So now if you take a look at here, now the constraint, we are saying SR policy path affinity. So in this case, we are saying, okay, hey, this is our optimization objective based on IGP. And I'm saying constraint affinity exclude any. That means when you are calculating an IGP path, make sure you don't pick any link that has a color red. That's why we are saying exclude any. It means exclude any link that has a color red. So in this case, we have a color red between 6 and 5. So the system is not going to go ahead and pick this particular link. That means there is no other path. So the node 1 will pick only the top path. We can also go ahead and given constraint based on IP address. So we just went ahead and configured a prefix set. We are calling set one and we can say, okay, constraint address and exclude set one means any node that has this particular IP address simply exclude that. That means it's going to go ahead and exclude this node. I'll go ahead and probably pick only the top paths. We can also go ahead and configure something called SRLG, which are called shared risk link groups short as for SRLGs, I identified by number, basically, links within the same SRLG ID share a common risk. That is same fiber conduit simply. So in this case, we have configured an SRLG, which is your shared risk link group. And in that we are saying, okay, the interface is gig 0, 0, 0. We are going to assign some value where we say, okay, 10 value of double one, double one, 20 value of 22, 22. Similarly, here we can go ahead and configure 10 as, let's say, now the 10, these both are sharing this particular value, okay? And we can go ahead and exclude some of those things. So now we can say, okay, hey, now when you are configuring a policy, in the policy we can say constraint, SRLG exclude double one double mean. Means you just simply have to exclude the, your risk group, which has a number of double one double one. And that happens to be fall under your link gigabit ethernet 0000. Okay. We can also go ahead and give a constraint of maximum metric. So in this case, we are saying, okay, hey, uh, do the thing needs to be less than equals to 80. Uh, that can also be done with the help of maximum metric. And again, you would use a different type of constraint that says bound type set maximum five says in the solution. Again, these are some different type of conditions that we can go ahead and do that. We earlier talked about the disjoint path. You can go ahead and do that. That disjointness can be based on link node SRLG or SRLG node. The example that we saw earlier that was based on the node. You can go ahead and you know exclude either link or the SRLG or risk group links and or the any particular node in that one. And I think that would. Yeah, so that will be pretty much for uh, this particular episode. I know we have quite a bit of few more slides to cover, but uh, we have lined up a lot of hands on so far. And we want to go ahead and cover those things that we have just learned, like configuring a static explicit policy, dynamic policy, and some of those different aspects. Once we are done, then we'll come back to uh, this slide deck again, and we'll talk about some of the other concept in this one, as like you can see on demand and uh, few other things that we I was just scrolling through this slide deck then we'll go ahead and look at this automated steering uh, we'll probably talk about the creation of VPNs and some of the other so this is a pretty lengthy topic but so far what we have covered we're going to go ahead and you know uh, see all those things in action with the help of and so so that'll be all for this episode again if you have any questions you know do leave me a comment good or bad or if you have any question you need further clarification uh, do let me know that I'll see you guys in the next episode and we'll go ahead and start doing the hands-on for the things that we have learned in this episode.